What's up, everybody? It's John John Sports Watch Global. coming at you with a brand new video. How's everyone doing today in the YouTube universe? It's time for another video. It's time for us to dive in our archives and check out a really, really cool Topps traded set. It's the first traded, standalone traded set ever created. 1981 Topps traded. We'll get into this in one second. Let me put that up there. I just want to remind everybody about our eBay store. Go check it out. There's a link down below in the description. We have all kinds of graded cards there, collectibles, comic books, some raw cards as well, and I think some autos and, and other really nice goodies there. Go check out the uh, eBay store. Link down below in the description. Also, don't forget to become a subscriber to our channel here. Be part of our family. Um, and uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button right now. Also, hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we post a new video. And also, becoming a subscriber enables you guys to participate in our auctions that we have every weekend here on YouTube. And look out for a preview video for our next live auction, which is going to be awesome, uh, coming up in the next few days. And it uh, should be either Saturday night. I think we're doing the auction next this coming Saturday. So look out for a preview video on that in the next day. Okay, so let's talk about this set here. 132 cards in this set. It's a first time Topps release. This is a standalone trade set. It's obviously called Update now. Um, and there were some other traded card uh, pieces that were put in packs in 1972. There were seven cards in 74. I don't know if they have the exact amount of the 74s in the 40s. Um, they had uh, inserted uh, traded cards in the 1974 top set and also in the J.C. Penney uh, factory set that you could have picked up. In the 1976, they had the traded cards too. But this is the first uh, standalone release the tops came out with with players that were traded, maybe some players that uh, were considered rookies uh, are in here as well. There, uh, there were 100 sets per case. It was 450 bucks per case back in the day. It's a hobby only product, so you couldn't have picked this up at uh, at a retail outlet. I did go to a hobby shop, um, your LCS down the road or wherever it might have been to pick this up. And if you were a hobby store owner, you had to buy two cases of this product as a minimum. What else can I tell you about this? There's some controversy behind this release, and uh, let's get into that right now. So these these uh, update trade type sets, they're always good because you're, you're seeing sometimes for the first time rookie cards, um, standalone rookie cards in, in, in case of the older products. Um, but, you know, this gentleman, Dr. Jim Beckett, we all know who Beckett is, decided that he was going to, 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 uh, to change things and that, say, for example, 1981, Tim Raines had a uh, had a Future Stars card, and we'll show that to you guys at the end, along with his uh, standalone cards in here. He had a Future Stars card, which, to me, in my opinion, does not um, deserve the rookie card status. It's called Future Stars for a reason. Um, I would say that the standalone cards in, in these kind of releases should be considered the rookie cards, but Dr. Jim Beckett decided that that was not going to be the case, and so the, the, car, the players that had cards that were appearing in the regular release would uh, would be considered the rookie cards and anything after that. And it's like trade series would be considered uh, not rookies or an XRC, which is an extended rookie card. And for like Reigns, for example, they didn't even give him that status. So I'm, I was reading up on this and I was a little shocked that like Topps didn't weigh in and make the decision. They let this Jim Beckett, founder Beckett, decide their fate and uh, our fate as well. So I do not agree with that man's assessment of deciding that Future Stars cards are rookie cards and standalones in a traded series are not considered rookie cards. It should be the opposite. The Future Stars should be like almost like a prospect card and a standalone card should be considered the rookie card. And it should make and it would shoot the value up on say, for example, something like this because you can only buy it at, a, at an LCS. So, the, uh, the XRCs in this release are Danny Ainge. We all know who he is. He went on to play with the Boston Celtics. Had a really nice basketball career. Gary Gray and Gene Nelson. So let's get into this. Now, I've opened this, this box up twice. Once, uh, about three years three years ago, excuse me, uh, to pull out the reins because I was getting some cards graded, and then I realized it was off center, so we didn't send it in. So that's here. And uh, then I opened it up. We're opening up today for the second time. So bought this back in 1981. We bought two of these. You can still see the ripple there. And then obviously I pulled out reins. If these are in order, that's that would make sense there. Let's get these out of here and see who's in this set. I did not look at the checklist. Fernando Valenzuela is in here. And there's the checklist on the back. 
I don't know if these are in order. Here's the checklist card. Pretty cool stuff. Let's put that over there. So let's take a look at it, at this. This is the uh, the ball cap release. Uh, tough one to get in good centering. But these cards are obviously in prime shape. Pack fresh type cards. And um, let's get going here. So it's Steve Switzer moving on from the Cardinals to the Padres. Let's see. So we would be starting off on card number 727, which is, this is 840. So these are going to be out of order. Mark Wagner, Gene Tennis, Whammy, Fred Stanley, Tom Underwood, Dick Davis, Juan Beniquez, Frank Tanana, Butch Hobson, really coming over from the Red Sox. Yep, one of the Angels. Rick Bosetti. Jill Lefebvre. Joaquin Andahar. Looks like they painted his cap there, coming over from the Astros. So for some people, maybe you've never seen this release before, and I, in real reality, this is my first look at a lot of these cards. Like I just said, this is the second time this has been open. It's a little bit of a print stain there, Don Doyle Alexander. Steve Ranko, played for Expos all those years. Not too bad of a pitcher. Mark Clear. Jeff Burrows. Doug Rayu, right near the end of his career here. He's on the DL. Pretty good Dodger pitcher. He had um, a couple nice seasons there. Decent pitcher. Ken Force, another good pitcher. Steve Henderson. Whoops. Bob Baylor. Burt Blylevin, Hall of Famer. Remember from the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. So the Twins, Rangers for a few years, and the Buccos, and then the Indians picked him up. Cesar Geronimo, it's probably a trade. Rupert Jones. So he was uh, had a little cup of coffee with the Yankees and then was uh, dealt to the, uh, or maybe signed as, not probably dealt to the um, Padres. Bobby Bonds. There were the Cubs. Is that a Cubs jacket, or do they paint that whole thing, too? It's hard to tell. Hard to tell. Mickey Hatcher. Randy Jones. There's Raleigh Fingers. First time with the Brewers. The A's all those years, and the Padres for uh, four seasons. And then the Brewers, those first Brewer cards, pretty cool. Ken Kravec, Gary Matthews, Rick Ruschel, definitely painted that hat too. The looks of it. You can see it just looks so weird, like they superimpose his face over a different body. I don't know, it's weird. Coming over from the Cubs, all those years of the Cubs, and the Yankees are going to play the Pittsburgh Pirates too. Mike Vale. Bob Walk. One of our Pittsburgh Pirates announcers. I always talk about that. Seems like a very nice gentleman. I think I met him one time. So, from the Phils to the um, Braves. But I don't think that's considered... I don't know if he has a card. I have to look and see if he has a card in the uh, 1980 release. Can't remember off the top of my head if that's considered his rookie card. Uh, Barry Foote. Doug Bird. Uh, Mc. Keller, Rick Burleson, long-time Boston Red Sox right there, Bruce Souter. So here's his first um, St. Louis Cardinals card. It's pretty cool, Hall of Famer Bruce Souter. Pretty 
Cool to see that. Jerry Morales, Dave Bergman, Jason Thompson. They painted his hat too. Although, you know, a bunch of years with the Tigers, a, a short one year stint with the Angels and the Buccos got him. I remember him kind of being a little mopey. I didn't want to be on our team. Um, that's what I gather as a, as a youngster. Bob Lacey, Dennis Lamp, Dave LaRoche, Jerry Mumphrey, Mike Phillips, Mike Proley, Bill Fahey, Ellis Valentine, that big smile. So he's in a happy, happy mood being on the Mets right there. Mike Lum. Who else was a traded card in 1976 tops too? Bob Ochinko with a painted hat. To the Padres, one year with the Indians, then off to the Oakland Athletics. Dickie Thon. Ken Landro. Tony Scott. They painted that helmet too. Looks like that. Looks like that. Rafael Landestoy. Great shot, Mr. Landestoy. Jeff Reardon. A couple years of the Mets, then off to the Expos. Dave Revering. Harry Spillman. They loved, they were just going crazy with the paint jobs on these cards, aren't they? Or weren't they? Nick, uh, Kiko Garcia. Tom Oriole. It's Carlton Fisk. Pudge. So he has two cards this year. He's got his Red Sox one in the base release, and he was dealt to the uh, Chicago White Sox. Carlton Fisk, Hall of Famer. Ray Burris, Randy Lurch, Ted Simmons, Hall of Famer. All those years of the Cardinals. Look at that. That is a long time being with one team. And then he goes out to the Milwaukee Brewers. But nice uh, card right there. I don't think I've, I've never seen that one before. Victor Cruz, Mike Bomback, Dave Kingman, King Kong, Roy Howell, there's Fernando, corner ding. That's a problem with these boxes, you know, they get banged around, you never know what's going to happen. It's kind of disappointing, and it's got a really bad crease, holy smokes. How did that happen? Good lord. That's Terrible. <laughs> Fernando. I had to see the other one. It looks like we haven't opened up that one. Um, actually, no, we opened up that one once too to pull out the reins. So, but that's a terrible crease right there. Wow. How in the Lord did that happen? It's all, all I want to know. It's pretty bad. Fernando Valenzuela rookie card. Disappointing. Danny Ainge. So an XRC. Extended rookie, Jim Essien, Fred Lynn, Gary Gray, another XRC, Kevin Saucier. Every picture I see of him, I think I've maybe seen him smile once. He's always grouchy looking. <laughs> just this guy, um, just not happy. Well, maybe because he was traded from Philadelphia to, to Detroit, so maybe that did it, did it to him. Rick Honeycutt with the old squint. Richie Zisk. Always seems to be happy on his cards. Sexto Lescano, Larry Sorensen, Joe Morgan, Hall of Famer. That's a cool card. Love it. Rest in peace, Mr. Joe Morgan. Jerry Martin, Ron LaFleur. The White Sox don't use this uniform in a throwback thing they need to, because that's cool. Love that collar. Very nice stuff. Larry Bittner. Love this guy in the background, too. Well, he played for a long time, too. Holy smokes. Started out with this Washington Senators. Buck Martinez. Roy Lee Jackson. Rick Miller. We got a lot to go through here, too. Let's move a little quicker. Jeff Zahn. Mike Cubbage. Maybe the A2 trade set too, and we'll dive into that one in the coming weeks too. Only have one of those though, but that's going to be a pretty cool one to take a look at as well. Bill Travers, Terry Kennedy, Larry Milburn, 
Gaylord Perry, Hall of Famer. Look at all those years, too. The Giants. I mean, he played for a long, long time. So for the Yankees, he's probably an add-on, I'm guessing, there at the end of the year. I'm not 100% sure on that. But then now, then sign with the Braves. Daryl Porter. The Royals, the Brewers before that for a long time. Greg Luzinski. Ed Ott. Jim Spencer. Joe Rudy. Great outfielder for the A's for like the longest time. Enos Cabell, another really good player. Longtime Astro. Billy Allman. I think he's a former number one draft pick, I believe. Gene Nelson. Leon Roberts. Leon Durham. Dave Roberts. Claudel Washington, rest in peace. I was like Claudel Washington. Pretty good player there. Mark Hill. Hubie Brooks. So again, he has a um, Future Stars card in this in this year. So, but this is a standalone. Again, not considered a rookie card by Jim Beckett's standards. It's ridiculous. I don't know how to, again. I don't know how Tops would like allow like one individual to. I don't care what what he is. Uh, you know, you know what what his historical references are in this hobby. Doesn't matter. They shouldn't have one person for, from an outside source deciding on things like this. It should have been Tops making the decisions, not him. And that's just that that is the truth. Carney Lansford, Don Sutton, Hall of Famer, his first Astros card, pretty cool. Tony Bernazard, a couple years of the Expos, not to the White Sox. John the Count Montefusco. Happy to be with the Braves, looks like there. I'm guessing it's a spring training photo. Cliff Johnson, played forever. Ken Ritz, putting on the Ritz. Hector Cruz, Bob Nepper. <laughs> with that mustache, oh man, that's, that's creepy. Uh, Lenny Randall. Ken Clay. Pete Vukovic, that stash was in. I mean, look at, uh, like they went to the same uh, stylus there. Holy moly. Jim Dwyer, Bob Shirley, Rusty Staub, Le Grand Orange. Played for like a long, long time. Started his first year out with the Houston Colt 45s. Dick Drago. Mario Mendoza, we all know the Mendoza line. John Littlefield, ah, oh, looks so surly there. Famous for his uh, reverse negative uh, E2 um, Fleer card. Dave Winfield, Hall of Famer, awesome. The Yankees, all these years the Padres went over the Yankees. Jose Morales, Dave Edwards, Joe Strain, Bill Stein. John Urea, Brian Doyle, Larry Cox, Gary Alexander, and the last one is Mike Ivey, but we have one more. And did I get Gene Nelson? I think we saw him. Gary Gray, did we see him? I think we probably did. So there's the tray head set. It's pretty cool. Very cool, actually. All right, Tim Rock Reigns. There he is. So again, like I said, I opened this up about three years ago and I was going to send in uh, this card to get it graded. I hadn't seen what it looked like. Then I saw it. The centering is off. So I opened up the second one and the centering is off the opposite direction. So this is a tough one. But there he is. I really love this card. Here's his Future Stars card. So again, Dr. Jim Beckett, Beckett, decided that this is the rookie card and that's not the rookie card. And I don't agree with that at all. I don't care what anybody says. I think it's ridiculous. One person decided this years ago, and this is the way we have to live with it. You know, um, to me, this is not a rookie card. Future Stars card. It should be considered a prospect type card. That should be his rookie card. Same argument can be held with uh, Barry Bonds in the 1986 trade set, and people argue with me all day about that. Um, that should be the uh, rookie card. 
and his 87 should not be. And I'm, I'm not sure if Beckett made that decision too, or if he set the standard, and then that was the way we had to live with it from that point on. A2 tops uh, Trey at two as well, Cal Ripken Jr. I believe they considered the future stars as his true rookie car, and the other standalone isn't. It's nonsense. Nonsense, in my opinion. Again, Top should have stepped in, dealt with this, not let some outside uh, third party decide this for the rest of us for years and years to come, period. Done. But this is a great card regardless. Great, great card. Yeah, 50 stolen bases as of June 11th, 1981. Very cool stuff. And he would go on to become a Hall of Famer. So there you go, guys. That is the 1981... Tops traded, the first ever trader release um, that Tops put out. Like I mentioned earlier in the beginning part of the video, there were three years that they had the traded cards inserted into the pack, 1972, 74, and 76. Um, but this is, again, the first standalone traded set. You can only pick this up at an LCS. It was not available via retail. So I'm not sure what the print runs were on these, but I imagine that would have been a lot lower. Um... And this is a very, very cool set. If you don't own this, my suggestion is go try to pick it up and uh, just make sure you don't overpay for it. Make sure it's sealed. That's important because you don't want to get it and then find out the Reigns is in here, the Fernando. And that Fernando is just really disappointing. I have no idea how that even happened. That, that stunk. <laughs> to see a dinged up corner and a big old crease right down the middle. How that happened, I'll never know. I'll check the other one out. It's probably going to be much better than that one. But that was just disappointing seeing that. Okay, that's all I've got for you guys today. Remember to like, subscribe, comment down below. Share this video with your friends, family, and loved ones. And uh, we'll be back with more videos this week. Um, we've also got our preview video for our next live auction. I think you're going to love it. So look out for that as well. And I look forward to your comments down below for this one. And that is all i got for you guys today. Thanks again for stopping by. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Supporting the channel here. It's much, much appreciated. Until next time, folks, this is John Jones, Sports Collectible, signing off on Hate. I'll see you all soon.